All right, so I've opened up the same landscape image inside PixArt. If you have the auto rotate option on on your phone, so whenever you're using a landscape image, if you just rotate your phone, the whole of layout in Pixar changes, obviously, just like any other app, and everything remains the same. It's just that everything is moved to left and right instead of top and bottom, and this allows for a better view for a landscape edit. So we've opened this. We're going to add the second image of the sky, which we saw inside Photoshop. So I'm going to click on that Add Photo tool that we've been we've used for the watermark also. Select this sky, tap on Add, make it really big. Okay, I don't even mind if I slightly stretch it like this, it's okay. And yeah, main thing is you just fill that white part for sure, okay. And now, where are those blending modes? So the moment you add this second photograph, remember in the watermark, we saw that there's a separate menu which comes for the second image, which you're seeing right now on the right. So by default, opacity is selected. We use that for the watermark, remember, like this. But here, if you just go down in this special menu for this image, you see the blend option. So right now, if I select blend, you're going to see those same modes, normal, screen, multiply, darken, overlay, and add. Okay, so overlay is something I didn't talk about. Uh, it's basically, right now you don't have to worry about it, I'll tackle that later, but basically it's a combination of multiply and screen happening together. Basically, bright things become really bright, dark things become really dark, and therefore overlay is mainly used to add a lot of punch and contrast to an image. This obviously is not suitable for it. Don't worry about overlay right now, but the other ones you can see are there. So which one do we have to use here? We know for sure either darken or multiply. Let's see which one works better. In Photoshop, darken worked better. So if I clicked on darken, yes, this is doing a fantastic, almost like a seamless job here. If you see multiply, it's kind of changing that look of the mountain because that's where the intersection multiplying and divide by 255 is happening, okay? So I think, to be frank, I can select this, but I think darken is not affecting the mountains in any way. I think this is looking good, but there might be some areas which might have been lighter in that mountain which might have got replaced by the sky. So just to be very sure in the top part that we're not using losing any detail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same selective method to edit this image which we used in the first edit, the portrait image, okay? which is if we select this eraser tool, remember this was on the top that time, right now it's on the left. So if I hit this, and then if I hit invert, just like in that image, we come back to our default, but now you know that if I select the restore brush, start running my finger, I'm only restoring the effect to wherever I want. So what I can do is of course I want whatever we did on the sky for sure, but I also don't want it to go too down. I just want it to be right near the horizon like this. I can go over the horizon, that's not a problem, but shouldn't unnecessarily let it come below where we might unnecessarily lose out on the parts of the mountain. Okay, now to be frank, this can be done in a much better way by using this select tool, okay, which is that automatic selection that we've seen and selecting sky from here, okay? But it's just that, uh, you'll have to again invert it, so don't worry about it. It can get a bit confusing, so I did not purposely choose it, right, because there's already, we've learned so much in this edit that I'm just preferring the manual approach here, okay? It's just that, that will be more automated. But that's okay. Right, I think this is fine. So we have, now we know that, yes, pretty much this image is perfect. I can hit the check mark again. Go back to the main interface, long press to see the before and after. Absolutely fantastic using blending modes. Now this was a basic edit, right? The main fun is gonna come in the next edit, which is gonna be a very unique portrait image. You would not have edited a portrait image like the one you're gonna do in the next video using the power of blending modes. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna see you there, bye for now.